theorist and Israelis are usually forthcoming about everything they do and had that election maybe been in July I bet half the people would have turned out a little bit more it was only 40% more people were getting their teeth worked on than actually came out for the election and I'm thinking maybe he planned that snowstorm ahead of time because people were probably scared to come out because a snowstorm might come you guys survive out here in Las Vegas from the snowstorm? Oh, yeah. No, I, I, I died. They're calling it Snowmageddon, Snownami. I mean, some of that stuff in front of my house is still melting. <laughs> Snow my gad. Is this only in Chicago they had all this stuff? <laughs> well, I, I called it Snowmance. That was my thing. You go ahead, you use that. Snowmance, because the pickup lines that I heard coming off the L that day, mid, mid three o'clock, could have only worked under those circumstances. <laughs> okay, my dumbass, like, oh no, I'll be fine, I'll be cool. Oh, getting off the blue line, Jesus, I love, oh, oh my God. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my mom. <laughs> Did you just, what, what? You want to ride? No, I don't, I don't even know you. I got four wheel drive and heated seats. <laughs> Snowblower, baby. <laughs> so he dropped me off, and uh... <laughs> did you see the weather? <laughs> I said, listen, buddy. Thanks for the ride. But <laughs> under any other circumstances, I'm a female, and I'm offended that you even thought you could just pick me up like that and say, hey, mama. But if you find that snowblower. You let me know where she, she can come over here and help me out with that. Ha ha ha! I love coming out to Oswego because, I'm gonna tell you why. Because the half of me, if it's this half, that's white, feels so comfortable here. <laughs> you guys don't know. Like, when I mean white, I mean don't underestimate my mom's whiteness. It's like crystal meth white. <laughs> I say that black clubs are like, ah, that's right, who does crystal meth? But white people are like, oh. <laughs> like sometimes macaroni and cheese really does need powder. <laughs> that kind of white. That kind of white where you the intervention type white. Honey, we just want you to be happy. You've been on the streets forever, honey. I'll do whatever it takes to pay you to let you go to Palm Springs and live a wonderful vacation life because I love you kind of white. <laughs> the kind of white that serves stuffing with Thanksgiving, not dressing. That's the kind of white I came from. And having that kind of mom with my Arab dad, and we'll go into that in a minute, that was like having a permanent exchange student with you all the time that got you into trouble. Or couldn't pay attention. I mean, I had to create a, you know, like a, uh, what is it called, Big Ten bracket for my mom? Just to explain the family tree. Every time we had a family event, I'm like, Ma, focus. In the Arab world, sometimes they got two wives. Listen, when you got cousins coming in, it could be one or two wives. Sometimes they fought, some people won. You gotta pay attention, get your head in the game, Ma. Come on, you married this guy, not me. But the worst would be when my parents would fight. And clearly my dad was losing the argument and his way of throwing in that towel was cursing at her in Arabic and walking away. So it'd be, I don't even know what that You know, I'm just a muck. <laughs> and so she'd be standing there laughing and she's like, Mona, come here. What did your dad just say? Mom, first of all, you should really learn this language. Second of all, he said, God damn your mom's chickens. <laughs> he said, really Demi, my mom's chickens? But I don't, I don't have any chickens. Is he saying we're gonna have to get chickens and then you're just gonna damn them? Why would he do that? Is he saying my mom looks like a chicken? Go clean your room. And my dad, on the other hand, 
he came here and it felt like he kind of landed from outer space because he it landed on the north side of Chicago by the Cubs Park, so he was kind of a douchebag. <laughs> he looked like Bill Cosby, but acted like Cheech and Chong. He was like, whatever, Mona, you don't even know. You learn Arabic like that? You don't, you don't know shit, Mona. You jive, okay? You, you don't even know. <laughs> Dad, why are you walking like this? Like another We're Arab, we don't walk like that. <laughs> uh, but he was kind of a bully, and you know, the reason I think why, you gotta, sometimes you gotta get in the head of your bullies. You know, nowadays we all complain about bullying, oh, bullying, sue people for bullying. The thing is, bullying taught you some shit. For instance, you go to the pool, you get de-pantsed, you don't wear those pants again, right? <laughs> you go to school, you drop the dirty underwear your mom told you to wash, you drop it in front of the whole basketball team and they made fun of you. You learn to do the laundry like mom said. You're a 300 pound high school student and they make fun of you because you're super fat. You learn sometimes it's healthy. You gotta lose that weight. Well, so then the thing is my dad would come down the stairs and nothing pisses off a malnourished refugee when he would come down the stairs on Saturday morning and he'd see his 200 pound Girl Scout eating her stash. He's like, get up, move, do something with your life. Go play soccer or something, you're big. <laughs> Can't you move? You know, when, I'm not like Russian. <laughs> when I was a kid, I, yeah, Dad, I know, you had to walk a hundred kilometers to school. No, I had to dodge bullets and guns and the Israelis maybe leaving the school on. Mom, Dad's having flashbacks. That's the kind of, that's the kind of life I had. But you think being Arab and American with that kind of level of stress, I would've turned out a stripper, because... <laughs> Are, you know, they have an issue, they have issue, or they're going to school, sorry. But I went to school, so. <laughs> but you know, you never see Arab strippers. Can you imagine an Arab stripper? All right, let's do, uh, give it up for a baklava. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> sir. I, you can put the money in here. <laughs> Or shish kebab. Hello, sir. I don't like you. You ladies, you want to be this third, fourth wife? You like the hair on the body? I don't even need to dance for you. You're nothing. Oh, that joke. I think I end up like that, because that's good. That's the next place.